Here we go. Booty, 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 smack! <laughs> Alright, we'll see who wins in this one. Oh man, already men's are going in. The men's are moving in with towards towards the fully jab combos in the very beginning to, to leave the other player unsus un you know they usually unsuspect that. They don't they don't suspect that shit right away because you know when somebody gets a really you know rare opportunity to go in, they usually wait for like the heavies and the in the, the mediums. But when they're doing jabs, it could be a great pressure tool, you know, for somebody to be anti on breaking something on reaction. It's a great tool overall. Oh, and there's the opening. Now, Hoagie, even though he's he's at a pretty huge advantage here, right now he actually can get you know pretty beat. Uh, he can get beat down pretty fast to uh, to the third round if he doesn't use his instinct. Now, right here, if Menzo had one bar, that could have been it right there. But now Hoagie's gonna have a chance. There it is, with the skulls and instinct, and Menzo's gonna he's in huge trouble right now. He's in big trouble. Because he wasn't able to finish the job. And Hoagie might be able to get away. Oh, oh gets gosh, thrown. Throw. Wake up throw. Oh, excuse me. Gets thrown on wake up. Now, this is going to prove to be a little bit uh, uh, difficult for both these players. Since uh, Hoagie doesn't have any more. Or he's trying to gain skulls. But at the same time, he has to deal with the pressure of Menzo's shatters and, and lances and everything. And teleport. Oh since he can get thrown at any teleport. And this is the Shattered, and that's an early lockout. This is going to be full damage. Will he use this for Skulls? Yes, he does. Three Skulls. Anything that Menzo does could be a potential punishment, and that's, that actually hurt. That All five hits managed to hit uh, Hoagie. Oh, it's thrown. What's the mix-up here? Oh, that doesn't connect. And that's going to Oh, oh my goodness. And that's going to end it. No, Menzo using the counter break and, and losing... His chance to deal some major damage all the way to danger mode. Two. Wow. Puddle punch missing. The scalpel punishment. Great start so far, but nobody has actually done any kind of major damage right here. These guys, a second round can actually be very, very stressful since after the first round they learn somewhat of the habits of each other. And that's when they start implementing some more counter breaks and, and sometimes uh, relying less on reaction and more on feels. For, especially for combo breaks, man. Oh my gosh! Alright. Nice combo. Only has only added one Shadow Curse into one Oh my goodness, and that was huge for Hoagie. He needs to add some more damaging factors. Instead, he... What? I cannot believe he got a second one. And that's going to add a third shadow? No, a second shadow. Oh my goodness, this man with double counter breaks. If you notice, the second counter break, he didn't do too much damage, but he wanted to add another curse. Unfortunately, that disappears at the moment he gets touched. Oh, very nice punish. This is big trouble for Menzo, as, as Hoagie was able to sap enough instinct before the third round. And Menzo is about to have instinct of his own, but keep in mind, if if he doesn't use instinct, and Hoagie manages to get a Shadow Fireball, it's going to prevent him to get any kind of utility from that. And there it is. No matter what, Menzo finally utilized his armor. What What is he going to do? He's probably going to be looking for a teleport, maybe? There it is. Oh, gets punished. This is looking pretty bad for Menzo. Menzo's about 10% left instinct. Oh my god, and there, went, there it was. The opportunity of a lifetime. I'm not sure what Menzo can do here. He's gonna have to battle Hoagie, Hoagie's instinct, Hoagie's teleports. Oh my goodness, the damage. The damage. Hoagie is gonna do wake up instinct. What is he gonna do next? Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. Wake up instinct into Shadow Skeleport. Alright, let's see what's gonna happen here. Jeff showing that he had a very, very rushed down Jago. But AJ, knowing AJ, he has tons and tons of experience towards Jago. So Jeff might be in trouble here. I'm not sure. Shadow counter. Ooh. 
Very nice combo. 35%. That's pretty good. Oh, 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 oh. One, two, three, four, five. Full damage. Even though that is a level three, that is everything that Sidir could have done. No problem, Hoagie. Oh, nice cross up. Yeah, thanks for that, Hoagie. That that's exactly uh, what I what I. Uh, if I was in your shoes, I would have done the same thing, man. Thank you for that. AJ taking that by a landslide. Now, everyone knows how much AJ has, uh, you know, how comfortable he is with the Jago matchup. And this is going to be really crazy. Jeff is definitely going to... Jeff... Two, oh, man. Two throws. Oh, tried to bait a third one. Oh, oh, oh! AJ moving in. Oh, gets hit with a very, very late standing roundhouse. Oh, nice block. That was a brilliant bro uh, block right there. Oh, gets hit with a cross up. Oh, and this is gonna hurt. One, two, three, four, five. If you notice, AJ's not ut utilizing any one chance breaks, he's putting in full raw combos. Now, if you can imagine, if he still does that in Season 2 and ends it with a Shadow uh, Recluse, that's going to do scary damage. And that ends the first uh, bar of health that Jeff has. This is game point for AJ. Ooh, misses the dive, and Jeff also misses the uh, uh, whiffs the throw. Another cross up. AJ's really, really good with those cross ups. Oh my goodness. Miss input, and this is gonna be shadow countered. You can actually shadow counter on uh, shadow counter that on any hit actually. Oh Ooh, could have been that could, could have actually DP through that. Jeff is in huge trouble. He's gonna have to utilize his instinct early for this one because I'm not sure if if he, if he knows what AJ is capable of with this much of a health deficit. AJ can do a lot of reckless stuff and and not you know not suffer the consequences that much, especially with the timer. Look how short it is, and this might be able to end it. One, two, three, four, five. And that ends it. Great games to both players. Mini Big Jeff, thank you so much for competing. Yes, awesome sir. stuff. Yeah, it, it can be it can be quite a drag for a lot of people that you know don't don't have a lot of time to to play in tournaments. Here we go. Here's to no disconnections, please, please. It's in your local gas station. That's awesome. All right. Well, the Frank opening up LCD with a nice low into in a level three combo, thirty percent, not bad. Uh oh, it's lagging a little bit. Frank did say if it did if it did disconnect him again, he would forfeit, and that's that's, not, that's something I don't want to happen. That would fucking suck. Excuse me. <laughs> Freaking Menzo. LCD already losing the health deficit here, but this might actually do a lot of damage. Oh my gosh, how much damage was that? 55%, that is pretty good. For two shadows, that's okay. Usually usually you can get that kind uh, uh, with one shot. Me and... Me and me and... What, Devil Jin? I have no clue what you're talking about, dude. Okay. 
What do you think of that music? Oh, I was like, what the hell are you saying? <laughs> Oh, didn't, was unable to uh, chip out LCD. I think if he did a Shadow Uppercut, he would have been able to. And that, oh my gosh. I'm not sure if this is going to end him. No, this is going to take a, oh my gosh, the, the damage. 69%. Oh. What's up, Devon? Oh man, what the Frank is in huge. He's on danger mode and into instinct. Wow. Great stuff. One step closer LCD. To What's up, Don P? How are you, man? Ooh! You know what? That was actually a very well placed counter break. It was very well placed. Two to eight people online? Nice. I actually just picked up that game. I picked up that game because uh, Gutter and and Spoonerism. They uh they, they you know they ha they now have the game and, and it kind of you know Moldy Bud as well posting a picture of of Jago in Minecraft. It, that all that motivated me to pick it up because I had the one for the 360. I'm actually looking for my hard drive so I can transfer everything. But anyway, enough about that. Frank moving in with the combos. What's he gonna do here? He needs, he, if he doesn't enter, ooh! You know, that was actually a very smart move, but I think I, I think he should have just stayed with a shadow uppercut. And of course, in season two, you can break it. Yep, where should I go? It's finally on Xbox One, and you can actually transfer all your files from 360 to Xbox One. I just don't know how, but it, it gives you the, the choice to do it. Excuse me. Two, three, four, five. Oh, shadow counter. Ba -da -ba -ba -da. The damage, man. I wonder if Orchid was able to do all that, all those manuals in season two. I'm not exactly sure. Oh my god, LCD having no help right now. And that it. That's it. Gamer LCD advances. Thank you so much, What the Frank, for joining and competing with us, man. That was a lot of fun, dude. One step closer to flushing out Ultra <laughs> It's probably on the cloud, Don P. Alright. Shadow switching to Thunder. Now we did talk about how he did play Thunder uh, earlier in, in the tournament. Let's see, let's see if this is any different. Already Paul B losing 65% of his health already. Look at the frame traps. Wow. Every time he does that back fierce man, it's, it forces you to think of what the hell he's going to do next. And most of the time it ends up being another frame trap or, or a very clever throw mix up. That's what makes Sailor so freaking scary in this game. That he can put you in all these options. And while you're too busy trying to think of it, he already thought of something first and he totally can open you up. Uh oh. And just like that, Paul B already defeated the health deficit, and now he's in the advantage here. Oh! Oh, jab into Shadow Salmon Mish. Weirdly enough, it's actually uh, unbreakable. I believe in Season 2, if you choose to do that, I believe it's breakable. Now. Oh, oh, nice one. Nice low. Ooh, nice break. That's going to be kind of get. Oh, what? Oh, it tries to go for another reset. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That was so risky with these two players. He went full in on, on the... Oh my gosh! He's going full in! Oh my gosh, and he... He stole the round! He stole the game! 
Holy crap! He went in with the most riskiest meaty setups because he felt yeah, for Bobby sure he was not going to do wake up shadow eclipse, and he caught him three times in a row. Oh my gosh, the risky play between these two is ridiculous. Holy crap! One one, the power. The power. Jeez. Primony. Shit. Amazing display, man. Amazing display of balls. Oh man, this is this is a huge improvement in, in Shadow's game after switching to Thunder. But you anything he feels confident now, but Paul you never want to call up Paul you never want to count out Paul B man. He always has something under his sleeves. Ooh, open render. Not sure what that was about. Oh That long block string into a back, uh, back fears into the, the target combo from far away is all a very, very great frame trap. So if you do crouching jab three times that they block it, you can do a, cr uh, a back fierce. And if they're far away, you can actually do just a standing target combo because the target combo actually extends way further, becoming another frame trap. It's actually, it's actually ridiculously good for a lot, uh, against a lot of people that don't understand it. But using it against like top, you know, high level gay, uh, gay, high level play, sorry, high level play, um, it can be very, very useful to keep the opponent at bay. It actually scares opponents into shadow counters. Oh, oh, we got the resets. Shadows must feel trapped at times like these. Now, Paul B doesn't need to advance any further. Shadows is going to have to do something. <laughs> oh, no. That it was a total miss. I'm not sure if he was trying to go for Shadow Command grab. More resets. More. Oh, my goodness. Another frame trap. Frame trap. Frame trap. Holy Jesus. Oh, my frame trap. <laughs> wow, Shadows has put up one hell of a good fight, man. He gave us one hell of a great show. Good games of Shadow 2 stuff. And we had Keats on our podcast as well, talking about it. Uh, talking about it. We talked about it for like an hour and 30 minutes. That's on my YouTube, uh, so you guys can check it out. So he can't cross. What's <laughs> up, Grims? Long time lurker, semi recent follower, recent sub, former KI Dev 2. How's it going? What's up, Thrill? It's a shame we couldn't get you in on the tournament, man. How are you doing tonight? Ooh. <laughs> Police. Uh, King Rel, you can check it out on the front page of Twitch. There's all the links that you need to see on the front page. Just scroll down and you'll find it. Oh, nice throw. Looks like AJ is in the dominance for this one. Oh. Oh, nice try. Wow. Did he really just... He really just mashed the low kick to just, just to avoid that. That is probably the lowest profile in the game, I believe. I'm too free for the tournament. You're all too good. Oh well, I mean you don't have to be good to play. I mean you're sub. If you just if you want to have fun, just let me know next time. Good stuff to AJ. Holy crap! Oof. 
Nice walk up throw. Ooh, probably caught AJ trying to jump. Not sure. That actually works as a really nice meaty setup to to try to, to hit Sadir out at any wake up shadow. Oh my gosh. What a brilliant counter break. This is turning around already. AJ with 5% health. He's getting hit by the web. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh. Oh my gosh, that seemed like it was going to be a smart decision, but he still got caught by the projectile. Here, they need tips to get out of these wolf frame traps, please. Oh man. Shadow counter, shadow counter, shadow counter, Bob Jago. Or unless you feel really confident, DP. Because if you try to backdash, it's a good chance that you'll get clipped in the lake by the by the season one jabs that are today, right now. Grim's voice is like healing. What? <laughs> oh man. And just like that, AJ beats Morbid Hoagie 2 zip. Very so nice, man. Shoink, I mean, I have to say, Shoink, you, you were an inspiration for this, man, because you were the first person to nail on an online tournament for KI before anyone else did. It was a huge inspiration. You did it so you did it so well and so successful. So successfully. So I would have to say thank you, man. Here we go. LCD very confident with his Orchid against Paul B's Saber Wolf. Paul B already proving so many resets right now. So many resets. And the thing is, anytime Saber Wolf does a crouching jab, he doesn't actually need to walk forward to throw. His his throw range is actually the farthest in the entire game out of the out of the entire cast. So he can actually do a jab and just throw right afterwards, making it one of the most ambiguous throws right now. And LCD's gonna have to try to do something. Orchid's throw is actually, I believe it is the worst throw in the game. It actually has one of the shortest distances. Um, and, um, but a lot of people seem to believe, well maybe, you know, since her mobility is extremely high, that's the reason why they didn't want to make her throw so well. Oh no, missed a counter break. Uh oh. Oh, gets hit with the Rekka. Wall splat into throw. LCD's gonna have to, is still he still has to climb a mountain, man, for this one. And Paul B's still sitting pretty with meter and he's releasing instant right away. Ooh! Did not confirm into Rekka with that low kick. Could have made something happen out of it. Yeah, showing no 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 problem, dude. I wish you luck on those interviews, man. Oh. Oh no, and I'm whiffed grab. Oh my goodness, the slide and opener ender. Actually, actually Hoagie tested out. It uh Orchid actually has like I think hers is the worst right now. You should test it out in training mode. And measure it with the squares. I believe Spinal's throw throw hitbox is actually bigger than Orchid's as well. There it is! One game goes to Paul B. Paul B showing his deepest, deepest respect for LCD. As they hang out with each other all the time, they're best friends. Sometimes they share a Jamba Juice smoothie from the same cup using two straws. Because that's exactly, you know, how friendly they are with each other. Not as the not fan favorite in this matchup. If you're rooting for Paul B, type in one. If you're rooting for LCD 3PO, type in two. Let just make sure his friendship is better. <laughs> That's very true, Telepathy. Without a doubt, man. Without a freaking doubt. Alright, here we go. LCD. Very confident in this Jago matchup. We've seen him play a lot of Orchid. In my opinion, I, I would have felt more comfortable watching his Orchid against uh, Paul B. Sabrel because it seemed like he was doing a lot better. The one thing that LCD is having trouble with is Paul B's frame traps because every time Paul B drops a combo, he usually follow, follows it up with a jab. And if you get caught blocking that jab, he has three options. He can either throw you, he can sit there and wait for you to, to do something, or he can dash cross up. 
That's definitely one of the mind games that Paul B, uh, Paul B can do. And LCD is unable to follow any instance of this right now. So now he's going to go ahead and lead LCD. Um, and this is the part where LCD has to make sure he's not reckless with any of his buttons right now. Because he can easily kill himself with his own mistakes. Ah, uh, yeah, Hoagie, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, I think Orchid's throw range is the worst in the game. Throwing House actually uh, pointed it out, and I, I looked at it myself in training mode to get a better understanding of how bad it was. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Alright, we, we have a split decision. LCD and Paul B. A lot of people. Here we go. Oh my goodness, getting thrown over and over again. Uh-oh. Thrown for the third time. For the fourth time. Oh, overhead. And broken really early. Paul B most likely has a very good a very good understanding of how scared L C D can be. Or how uh, scared L C D is with any kind of counter break. Oh and there it is. The sink oh And that's gonna end it. Uh -oh, with the that that's actually technically a one chance break because the target combo, you can only break the heavy. You can't break the uh, the strong.